Now, one, one of the reasons that Trump likes the shutdown is that there's a chance it might make you forget for a little while that there's this thing called the Russia investigation. <laughs> Anybody remember that threat to the very nature of our democracy? Well, last week, we learned something damning about former Trump campaign chairman and me in about a year, <laughs> Paul Manafort. Turns out during the campaign, Manafort gave campaign polling data to a Russian agent. This certainly looks like collusion. I mean, if it walks like a duck, and quacks like a duck. Paul Manafort is so ducked. <laughs> so the links to Russia... So the links to Russia are wrapping around Trump like a boa constrictor around a Florida grandpa. But... <laughs> there are... He was sleeping in the sun. But... There are still some people on Trump's side, like attorney and man... <laughs> Attorney and man doing the 10-year challenge between his top and bottom teeth, Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> last night... Last night, Rudy went on the Chris Cuomo showmo, where he was asked about Paul Manafort's shady dealings. Now you have Paul Manafort giving poll data I, I that winds said... up leading to this coincidence. Well, you just misstated my position. I never said there was no collusion between the campaign He basically, he basically went on TV and admitted the Trump campaign colluded with Russia. That is so shocking, you saw it, he shocked himself <laughs> when he heard him say it. Seriously, it was a huge reaction. Let's take a closer look. I never said there was no collusion between the campaign. I don't want to go to jail! Then... <laughs> <laughs> then... Giuliani drew a distinction between the Trump campaign and the head of the Trump campaign. There is not a single bit of evidence that the President of the United States committed the only crime you could commit here, conspired with the Russians to hack the DNC. Yes, there is zero evidence that Donald Trump reached out to Russia. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. Obviously, he was joking, if Russia was listening. <laughs> Now, that looks bad, but only if we're going to start counting evidence as proof. Rudy's comments... Rudy's comments are just another example of the Trump team moving the goalposts. In November of 2016, Trump spokesperson Hope Hicks said of collusion with Russia, it never happened. There was no communication between the campaign and any foreign entity during the campaign. But in February 2017, Sarah Huckasans added, to the best of our knowledge, no contacts took place. To the best of their knowledge. They could have just taken a lot of Ambien and committed sleep treason. <laughs> then, in March, Don Jr. was all, did I meet with people that were Russian? I'm sure, I'm sure I did, but none of that were set up. Yeah, he colluded accidentally. You hang out in Trump Tower long enough, you're gonna ride the elevator with a felony. <laughs> then he admitted the meeting was a setup. Hey. Then he admitted the meeting was a setup, but claimed it was for Russian adoption and said it was okay because they in exchanged no meaningful information. Now, that I believe. I've heard Don Jr. speak. <laughs> then, in December of 2017, President Trump said, there is no collusion, and even if there was, it's not a crime. He just moved the goalposts to a whole different sport. <laughs> it's a hole in touchdown. You're out. <laughs> and there's breaking news about former Trump lawyer and man whose smile is somehow sadder than his frown. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Michael Cohen. Cohen has already been sentenced to three years in prison for being Trump's porn star bagman. But this morning we learned that he also tried to rig online polls in Trump's favor prior to the presidential campaign. It almost worked. But Trump refused to change his name to Bodie McBoatface. <laughs> Apparently, face. to rig the polls, Cohen hired a consulting firm and was billed $50,000.
but instead of giving them the full 50K, Cohen showed up with a blue Walmart bag containing between $12,000 and $13,000 in cash and a boxing glove that had been worn by a Brazilian mixed martial arts fighter. Wow. One boxing glove? <laughs> That's the payoff equivalent of rifling through your car for a birthday present. Oh, uh, happy birthday. I got you, uh, got you a road map of uh, Tennessee and uh, some sticky pennies. <laughs> Cohen also asked the consulting firm to create a Twitter account called At Women for Cohen, which claimed to be run by women who love and support Michael Cohen. So he paid fake women to say nice things. That's refreshing. Usually he pays real women to say nothing. Ooh. And, Ooh. and, <laughs> we'll get to it. We'll get to all of them. Both of them. And these non existent women loved Michael Cohen, who they described as a strong pit bull sex symbol. <laughs> Sounds like someone has the hots for Michael Cohen, and it's Michael Cohen. <laughs> Then there th there's this tweet. Never too late for hashtag man crush Monday and a hashtag selfie. Okay, you can't say it's never too late. Then provide photographic proof that it is, in fact, <laughs> far too late. We got a great show for you tonight.